I'm going to tell you how eBay and Amazon analyze a seller account. Okay? It's actually set up this way. I'm going to tell you what they basically told me. So I've talked to various PayPal representatives and people at eBay, and you know, I figured out how they work. Now, you probably noticed back like maybe, I don't know, seven years ago, they started doing the automated technique for analyzing things. What I mean is, is they look for certain spikes. They have these automated programs set up to find certain anomalies within data. Okay, for example, you start making a lot more money the next month. Last month you made $100. This month you're making $5,000. Okay, that's a spike. And their little automated programs see that, detect it, and an alert a PayPal, eBay, or Amazon account representative. Okay, so they don't go and look at accounts all the time. Unless you have a higher up account that's making a lot of money or a lot of sales, they don't really care about you unless you make a spike in some way, shape, or form. By a spike, I mean you have a lot more sales this month than last month. You have a lot more refunds this month than last month. You have a lot more new items being sold this month rather than compared to last month. What I mean is like if you're selling the same items, generally you put them in the same category, same keywords. If you all of a sudden change the type of product you're selling, that also, if you do enough changes, that also can alert them. Even Google uses this goofy technique. If you go into your website and you change a lot of content on your website, they basically look at that new content as like it's a new website. And if you have enough of it, it will basically screw up your website if you had a, like a good presence with your website before and all of a sudden you change the content a vast amount. So this is what they're doing. They just have risk assessment people over your account. That's literally what they are. All they do is assess the situation to see whether or not you're too risky for their company. That's all they care about, literally. So if one month you sold $0 and the next month you sell $10,000 worth of items, you're considered risky, particularly if you haven't been selling for a long time or you haven't sold before and you have a new account, okay? And highly likely you'll get suspended. Doesn't matter if you have no problems. Doesn't matter if they, you're selling the most innocent thing in the world. Doesn't matter if you're some big ass, now if you're a big ass company, they'll realize that. They'll be like, oh, we know that company. We'll leave them alone. But I mean, it doesn't matter who you are otherwise, okay? They're going to do something like suspend you and then say, prove you own this stuff, blah, blah, blah. And likely because you went so crazy selling so much so quickly and they don't have the time or patience to deal with using their brain and analyzing stuff, they'd rather just suspend your account and leave it that way. That's generally how they do stuff. Unless you can somehow prove you're some big wig company. Then they'd be like, oh, this is some big company. Oh, okay, let's just give them their account back. If you're some small-timer dude that just came on there and you had an awesome time and sold a bunch of stuff real quick, they don't like you, okay? That's how it works. So what you do if you're one of these guys that are really good at selling is you don't sell a lot of stuff right away. You start out slow and steadily increase rather than going like this, okay? Now, I know how some of you guys think because I'm the same way. I, I would just jump on a site and go crazy, and that's how I started eBay, you know? Back in the old days when they didn't do this kind of stuff, they didn't do risk assessment and things of this nature. But they do that today. They do that on Amazon. Matter of fact, one of my sellers, uh, he keeps getting into trouble because he keeps, basically he's just selling two expensive, he sells expensive items that are highly popular right off the bat. You can't do that on an eBay or Amazon, new eBay or Amazon account. You can't sell anything, you shouldn't sell anything over $100 on a new eBay or Amazon account, especially if it's super popular. If it's a popular item. If you got some iPhone you want to sell on your eBay account, not a good idea unless you got some feedback, okay? Especially if you got two or three of them you want to sell, okay? Then they're going to guaranteed suspend you. And it doesn't matter if you own them. It doesn't matter if you bought them at Best Buy. It doesn't matter. They don't care. It's all about risk assessment. I'm trying to educate you so you understand how eBay and Amazon works because 
they're not going to educate you. They're not going to tell you how they work. You're going to have to figure it out the hard way. Or you can listen to somebody like me who actually knows what the hell they're talking about. And they'll tell you how it works. Okay? That's how it works. So, generally speaking, the best way to start is with some small items. Stuff particularly around the house. You just want to get rid of. Because, generally speaking, with a eBay and Amazon on a new account, they, free, they hold your money anyways because they don't trust you. And as I indicated, they don't trust you any more than what you've proven. So if you haven't proven anything to them, they don't trust you at all. Okay? And it's all about risk assessment. So you should start out slow and steady. Like this. And especially if you want to grow an eBay account and have your limits raised, you don't keep selling new stuff every week or every month. You sell the same shit and just keep increasing it and you'll have the fastest ride to having higher limits. Because you're selling the same thing over and over. They can predict the behavior of what's going to happen. They saw that you saw sold widget A last week and the customer was happy. You're selling widget A this week and you're selling more of them. They're predicting your customer is going to be happy. And then the week after that and the week after that and it keeps going up until, wow, you got huge limits. Then you're like, okay, I got good limits now. I can start selling other stuff more. But don't introduce it too quickly. Introduce just a couple new items. Don't go crazy listing a bunch of new stuff. Because you might find all of a sudden your limits are lowered again. Or they freak out and suspend your account and say, prove that you own this stuff. You don't believe me? Go try it. And, see it. and then come back to me and tell me I'm right and thumb up my video. Because you'll find out I'm right. How do I know all this stuff? Because I have a lot of people that sell my stuff. I have a dropship company. I've watched hundreds of sellers sell things and I see patterns. And this is a very common pattern with eBay and Amazon. This is how they work. They don't care who you are. They're a big company. They have automated programs that look for spikes. Okay? When they see a spike, it, auto it automatically alerts some account representative. Maybe some dude in India that doesn't know shit about America or what you're selling. And then they look at your account. But usually, I think, particularly if you have a bigger account, they'll have somebody in America that will be looking at your account, particularly with Amazon, and or not Amazon, PayPal, for example. So this person looks at your account and they risk assess. Okay? So the, the, the safest way to, to grow on eBay and Amazon is to sell the same thing over and over. Start out slow, steady, Increase at a steady rate, but not too fast. Eventually, several months later, you have a big account, or maybe a year later, or whatever. And then you can start introducing, I mean, you can introduce new, you can have like a few products, you know what I'm saying? You don't have to, I mean, I'm not saying just avoid having lots of products. The point is, is that they have to be able to detect and read your past to predict the future. You understand the concept. So now that you understand how they think, you know how to gauge what you're doing. And then you can avoid problems, right? Because they don't tell you any of this stuff. They don't educate you. They just got some lame-ass thing that they put you through when you screw up, or in their eyes, you screw up. Okay? I had I have one guy. <laughs> oh, my goodness. This is funny. I actually, I, I was just laughing when I heard this one. I, I'm sorry. Maybe I'm a little calloused, okay? Maybe I'm just not good or something but I've been doing this for 15 years and I have to laugh at it at this point this guy literally sold nothing literally sold nothing he was brand new didn't know anything about how eBay or Amazon works he's just trying to sell a couple items he's just he's starting up on an eBay account wanted to sell a couple items that's all he's trying to do and he was hoping to start a business from it he tried to list two items it wouldn't list for some reason he he didn't indicate to me why it wouldn't list, but it wouldn't list, okay? So then he tries to he tries to list it again, and it won't list. So then he goes and makes a new account, <laughs> and he tries to list them again. And eBay suspends both accounts and says he's banned for life. <laughs> he hasn't even sold anything. He has no feedback. He hasn't sold a, a thing. He hasn't done anything. All he tried to do was list a like a couple items, whatever they are, that giving them trouble. Maybe there's some key words in his auction listing that they don't like. They don't like certain words. If you put certain words in your auction listing, they have an automated program that finds that word and says, you need to correct your listing because we don't, and they won't tell you what the word is. They'll just tell you, they'll just predict what you're trying to do. 
Okay, like for instance, if you're trying to sell an ebook on eBay, if you put the word ebook in your description, it will say, it looks like you're trying to sell an info product, and we don't sell info products. Of course, you might not be selling an ebook. Maybe you're selling, I don't know, uh, a portrait of some dude, and you just cite an ebook talking about the portrait of some dude, and you wrote the word ebook in your listing. Or maybe you're selling a car. And you just cite an ebook that says something about this kind of car, and you type the word ebook in your auction description. If you put the word ebook in your description in any way, shape, or form, it automatically rejects your listing. You see what I'm getting at? It doesn't matter if you're selling an ebook, it's because they're too, too lazy. They don't want to look at all these a advertisements to see who's doing what. They want to use automated scripts, and you got to play with their game. If you don't play with their game, you're going to be screwed. So maybe he had a couple words that they didn't like in his description or whatever. Who knows? Uh, I, have, I haven't talked to the guy in a, yet more, but uh, you get what I'm saying. So basically the guy's banned for life and he hasn't even done anything. He hasn't even listed one thing. He hasn't even had a chance to violate anything yet, and he's banned for life. That's how retarded eBay can be if you don't understand how they work. So obviously the moral of the story there is don't start another account. I mean... If you can't figure out how to list something, call them up and figure out. And they're probably not going to be able to help you on the phone either, by the way. you will probably be better just to go to an eBay forum and look around and see if you can find the answer through the power of Google. Because if you call them up, you're probably going to get some dude from India. Uh, Slippy! You know, one of those dudes that uh, can't speak English too well, uh, has no clue what you're talking about, and can't help you whatsoever. So, that's basically how it works. I thought I'd just let you know. And, uh, you know, so this is how it works. I mean, and this is how Amazon works as well. However, with Amazon, they don't even gauge you. They don't even have limits. They just let you sell like crazy. And if you're stupid and you try to sell like crazy, they'll just suspend you. So, you know, with Amazon, it's the same trick, though. They only they have risk assessors. They check, you know, to see what your metrics are. If you have spikes, you start selling a lot of stuff, especially highly popular items they're going to probably suspend your account. And they might suspend you for life and not even tell you why. So it's really nice like that. But And I'm telling you why. Because they're too lazy to freaking look into anything. They use robots and dudes in India to do shit. And I'm telling you how they work so that you can avoid all that bullshit. So hopefully that helps a few of you out. Thanks for watching.